good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us uh, for a presentation on fuzzy uh, host-to-guest attack surface of, on fuzzy invert IO PCI drivers in the context of the protected KVM. Um, so our, it's a big pleasure to you or give this presentation at KVM Forum in person in Dublin, and especially to co-author it with Bill Deacon, who is an active upstream kernel uh, developer, and he's sitting here. Um, and he's also leading the protected KVM project at Google to enable KVM for Android. Uh, my name is Eugene Rodionov. I'm uh, a member, uh, a security engineer on Android Red Team, where we do offensive security research for Android and Pixel, uh, mostly focusing on their low-level firmware. And uh, this presentation today is a collaboration of the two teams, uh, Feature Team and Red Team, where Red Team was tasked with performing in-depth review of for Android protected KVM to proactively identify any security issues in it and to make sure that uh, Android protected KVM is as secure as possible at the release time. Uh, a quick introduction what Android Protected KVM is. So essentially, your Android 13 comes with your uh, uh, virtualization services, which enables the native support for uh, launching virtual machines with mutual distrust. And the privilege, there are two keywords here, um, uh, mutual distrust, that's your guest VM no longer trusts the host. So basically, your Android Protected KVM provides security guarantees to the host, even if the, uh, even, uh, to the guest, even if the host is compromised, even if the attacker is able to run code in the privileged context on the AP. And vice versa, there is protection uh, from uh, misbehaving guests to escape in, in the host. And the guests are running uh, outside of trust zone, so they don't have trust zone privilege, which we uh, believe greatly reduce uh, attack surface. Um, there will be a number of other presentations at KVM Forum, so I won't be here in details so or uh, covering various aspects, and uh, uh, Quentin will be doing a technical deep dive for Protect KVM tomorrow, so or he'll provide a lot of information on low-level implementation details. And we will move uh, with the uh, looking at actual uh, uh, security concepts of Android Protected KVM and its security pillars. So at the very bottom, we have Secure Boot and Android Verified Boot, which is responsible for authenticating the system boot partition, making sure that we're booting the authentic kernel and the hypervisor. Uh, hypervisor is the keystone of the Android Protected KVM, as it actually enforces the isolation uh, of the memories between guest and host. And dear Mark, on the next session, will be providing uh, deep dive information on the, how this memory isolation works. And uh, on top of it, we have our attestation and sealing to actually enable uh, the confidential computing in Android. So our, uh, sealing enables uh, uh, virtual machines to have uh, secret data on the per VM basis and attestation enables external parties to attest that the code running in the guest is running in a good security configuration. And finally, on top of it, we have the actual software running on the host side and, and in the guest. On the host side, we have um, a virtual machine monitor and set of the virtual backend drivers. And uh, in the guest, we have the actual payload and bootloaders. And uh, due to the mutual distrust, um, the guest receives untrusted input from the host, and their software is software. If there are any vulnerabilities in the in, in, in this software layer, even if the, all, the, all the underlying blocks are implemented correctly and perfectly secure, uh, exploiting those vulnerabilities can undermine security properties of the Android protected KVM. And this is what we wanted to uh, mitigate and focus uh, in this presentation. So basically, uh, in, our, in the scope of our engagement, we focus on the holistic picture to make sure that all the layers are uh, implemented correctly and don't have any flaws. But here in this particular presentation, we will be speaking about their uh, software layer, and we will be prioritizing host to guest attacks. Uh, so uh, with that, um, here is how the attack surface for Android protected KVM looks like uh, from the standpoint where the attacker is able to run privileged code in, um, in the host. We have different layers. We have uh, L3 uh, running the most privileged code on the AP. Um, then we have a hypervisor layer, which exposes a set of hypercalls uh, to the host and to the guest. Uh, on the side of the protected VM, we have a set of the initial bootloaders executed. So we have PVM firmware. This is a stage one bootloader, the very first code which runs in the Android protected VM once it's launched. And the microdroid bootloader is the next uh, stage bootloader. Um, so both of them are based on U-Boot, but your, the feature team is uh, actively investigating the possibility of rewriting PVM firmware in Rust as an, as an additional defense in depth or, uh, strategy to or make the whole design even more secure. Um, as a kernel, we have a uh, um, generic kernel image, uh, Android kernel, and uh, as user space payload, exception level zero, we have microdroid manager payload, um, 
which provides the actual uh, services. On the host side, we have CrossVM as a virtual machine monitor, virtualization server, and we're assuming that the attacker uh, runs code either at exception level zero with root privileges or it basically uh, compromised the kernel, and uh, everything or in orange here is the attack surface exposed to the, uh, to the attacker. And uh, uh, in particular, we highlighted here the Virtio boxes here, uh, available both in, in, in the boot, in U-boot and uh, GKI. This is, uh, this is the main communication vehicle between the uh, host and the guest, and this is what we focused uh, in, this, uh, in this presentation to really uh, mitigate this attack surface coverage with fuzzing. So why fuzzy and Vertio is interesting. Um, so Vertio is a uh, specification which are, um, describes different implementation modes. There is packed mode, split mode. Um, just a quick overview for, uh, for the split mode. Vertio works by having uh, shared buffers between host and guest. So or there is a, a shared buffer called descriptor table, which is a, a table of descriptors. And every descriptor describes a IO operation. It has a, a physical address of the buffer, a length of the buffer, flags, and next field, which is used to chain descriptors in the descriptor table in the chain of descriptors if, uh, if there are more than one descriptor is required for the IO operation. If we have time at the end of the presentation, I will show one of the issues which we identified with, with, with this fuzzing effort, exploiting this um, uh, next field uh, in U-boot. And uh, we also have uh, avail buffer and use buffer. Avail buffer is used to communicate uh, from the guest to host, which descriptors are, in, uh, are, are used by the guest. And at the same time, uh, used is used to communicate backwards uh, by the host which the scriptors have been processed. So or, for instance, if, if a guest would like to perform an I.O. operation, it, uh, it finds the very first available descriptor in the, in the descriptor table, initializes it with the proper values, and puts it in the avail buffer. It signals to the host. Host erases it from the avail buffer, determines which descriptors it needs to process. It handles the I.O. operation. Uh, and it marks in the used buffer which descriptors it's processed and signals back to the uh, to the guest. And as we can see here, there is a lot of pointer arithmetics here. There is uh, uh, a lot of signed and signed integers. There is conversion from little engine to big engine, and this is uh, generally a error prone code. Uh, so, or, and uh, what happens? And the whole protocol is also very non trivial. And if the attacker is able to or uh, modify those values with the full write access. They can exploit vulnerabilities in the guest, get code execution, or exfiltrate confidential data. So this is really what we don't want and what we want to mitigate. And here is how the Vertio stack looks like in the protected guest. So we have the following devices. We have uh, Vertio console, Vertio block, uh, Vertio FS, and VSOC uh, devices. Uh, the box highlighted in purple, they are not present in U-boot, but they are present in GKI. So nevertheless, this is the attack surface that we are interested in. Uh, everything works on top of the Vertio uh, PCI uh, transport. And there is this ring, uh, uh, this ring uh, driver for handling the ring buffers for Vertio. Uh, before we go to the fuzzing, a few words about the existing efforts on fuzzing uh, on uh, uh, hardening Virtio. So for Linux mainline, uh, uh, host to guest is not a new attack vector. Uh, there are cases where the Linux is deployed in confidential or computing environments, and there is a set of uh, hardening patches. Uh, so and those patches are not from Google. So this, uh, these are industry patches from um, Intel, other companies, and. Uh, uh, reference at the bottom of the slide. Uh, however, this attack surface is new for Android and more particular in, for Android protected KVM, and that's why we are concerned about it. And uh, additionally, uh, the, the, when we looked at the implementation of the Virtio in U-boot, it wasn't hardened against these attacks. And because of this engagement and fuzzing effort, there was a set of hardened patches uh, submitted and upstream to the U-boot um, repository to or make sure we're not uh, uh, dropping any zero days today. So, um, uh, why fuzzing? Um, well, bottom line up, uh, for we don't have too much options for a project of such complexity as Linux kernel. Um, uh, for uh, solutions which can provide continuous security um, and uh, be at the same time uh, like very efficient from the standpoint of their uh, soundness and correctness and level of false positives. Um, uh, in addition to any other benefits which fuzzing provides, uh, the, the, the existing de facto standard tools, syscall or syscbot, uh, uh, already identified a tremendous number of uh, security issues in Linux kernels. So that was uh, 
one of the options that we started to look uh, at. So, however, when it tried to apply it to our fuzz and vertail, we encountered some challenges. Uh, first of all, the, the, the overall approach of syscaller is to fuzz everything inside of the guest VM. So basically, kernel under test runs in the virtual machine, and there is a, a sys fuzzer component which generates uh, mutated uh, data input, uh, which are sent to sys executor, which translates them to a series of syscalls executed over kernel under test. There is a coverage-guided feedback, uh, feed feedback to sysfuzzer, so this is how it works. And uh, this design works perfectly well when you are fuzzing uh, from top to the bottom, so basically you are attacking the kernel from the syscaller interface. However, we, uh, we have our data coming from the other side, from bottom to the up. Uh, from, from the hardware, and uh, this needed some modifications for the syscaller. So uh, this is not your, an ultimate limitation of the syscaller. There are some successful projects, such as USB Fuzz and Effort, uh, published two years ago, where there was additional instrumentation, additional syscall, uh, syscalls provided uh, um, in the syscaller to do this. And there are some other efforts, uh, such as KFL and KFX, uh, for doing that. Uh, uh, however, our team has a prior experience, prior art, with the tool which is called LKL. So we decided to leverage it for fuzzing uh, Vertio in this case. And LKL is the uh, Linux architecture port for Linux kernel, which enables building Linux code as a user space library and uh, uh, link it to the application. So we're essentially on the right-hand side, we can see how the LKL application looks like at a high level. So at the top, we have the actual payload uh, functionality. Then uh, all the boxes highlighted in green are what LKL is. So there is a syscall API layer. Um, there is Linux kernel, which is unmodified Linux code built for uh, LKL architecture uh, for Yes, generic LKL, uh, LKL Arch code is here. And at the bottom, we have a host environment portability layer. This is a layer which provides a set of callbacks for memory allocation, for creating threads, for um, like synchronization primitives, or to make it run on various, in various environments, such as POSIX, Win32, or Mac. And uh, this enables a very convenient uh, tool for doing uh, kernel unit tests and, their, uh, and fuzzing. So, or, and here is an, uh, just an overview how LKL can be used in your C program. So, or what you need to do, build just a uh, uh, Linux kernel for LKL as a static library and, links, and link it uh, statically to your application. So, or, uh, at this line of code, we are essentially initializing the kernel. It uh, takes two arguments, LKL host ops, which is the host environment portability layer. Uh, providing a set of callbacks for memory allocation, creating threads, um, synchronization primitives, and then goes their command line argument. As we are starting kernel without any other processes, we need to mount file systems by ourselves uh, to or make sure that we are able to or access device devices. And for instance, if we would like to work with device you hid, we would need to or create node manually by invoking make, make node add a syscall and there uh, and LKL underscore C's prefix indicates that we are invoking the syscall not from the host kernel, but inside LKL. Um, and the same goes for open syscalls. So once we create a node, we are able to open this device, and uh, we are using LKL underscore C's to indicate that we are invoking it in the LKL kernel, not the host kernel. So overall, as we have everything within the, the same user space process, uh, this enables a very interesting use case for fuzzing, where we can fuzz the Linux kernel without any virtual, machi any virtual machines running inside, an, inside of user space using a coverage-guided feedback fuzzer such as libfuzzer. Um, as a result, we, are, w we can get quite high performance uh, and scalability on x86 cores because there at this point, fuzzing Linux kernel becomes uh, very similar to fuzzing user space applications. As an additional benefit, we can also use their existing tools for debugging uh, user space applications, such as GDB for uh, crash data application, um, stack trace analysis, and uh, reproducing test cases. And as we're building it for uh, an LKL architecture, we have a possibility to mock out the uh, hardware interfaces such as PCI bus. And this is actually what we are using in this, um, in this fuzzing effort because LKL already comes with the implementation of the Virtio backend drivers. That's why enabling fuzzing Virtio frontend drivers using LKL was there, uh, not that complicated, so we can reuse already existing code in, in LKL to, or to fuzz this interface. Um, obviously, there are some limitations. So LKL doesn't support symmetric multiprocessing, which uh, makes it not very efficient, to say the least, for catching race conditions and their other concurrency-related issues. 
and obviously as we are building code for x86 we might encounter some uh, false positives true negatives um, uh, for, for the code which is originally intended to work on Arch64 architecture. Uh, here is an overview of the fuzzers developed uh, in the course of this work. So uh, a few interesting highlights is we, we are uh, testing Android 13 5.10 kernel. Uh, this is the kernel under test. And uh, we focused on working, working with Verte Ring because this is the actual uh, the protocol which we wanted to, to cover with fuzzing. Um, the fuzzer work, works by uh, getting the mutated inputs, uh, filling the ring buffers, which I showed previously with the, uh, this mutated input, and then calls into the guest. Uh, and gets coverage feedback. So we have case sent for crash detection. We, we also fuzz the Virtual PCI as a transport layer. So our, this fuzzer has some limitations, so the work is still in progress. We have currently it working for, uh, on, on, the probe, on, on the probe path, um, and we are leveraging their possibility to mock out their uh, MMIO interfaces in LKL because we are uh, Basically, we have control over it, so we can, uh, we, we, can, we can provide their mutated uh, data directly over their MMIU interface uh, exposed to VR PCI uh, bus. And uh, we have uh, also a Verte block fuzzer, which um, fuzzes their block configuration uh, block for, for Verte block device. And uh, uh, Rhino those fuzzers identified a number of uh, security and stability issues. Uh, here is an example of one of the issues which was identified by Verte block uh, fuzzer. So we have here an out of bounds write on stack uh, where in block read the full page function where there is a local array of fixed sized AARR and uh, this array is being used in this while loop where there is like index NR and uh, where assigning block head uh, structures. And there, uh, the fuzzer generate interesting input where we go out of bouncer. And uh, uh, this issue is pretty dangerous because uh, by using out of bouncer right on stack, we can overwrite the return address. And uh, this potentially can lead to code execution in the context of the guest. Uh, the root cause of the issue was the unusual block size generated by the fuzzer. So this is. Uh, uh, this is the block size. Uh, the interesting bit is that uh, uh, we get i block bits set to 32, and uh, the shift uh, left shift of 32-bit uh, integer one to 32-bit left uh, is undefined behavior in C. And uh, interestingly, here on x86 architecture, the result is very non-intuitive. If you shift one 32 bits left, you get again one. And uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, how the issue manifested uh, itself in the code. Uh, probably this won't be reproducible on R64, I believe, because it's going to be, it, it, it might be zero. But uh, I don't know if there is any cases covering what will happen if the create empty buffers will be passed to zero as a second argument. Um, a few words on fuzz and Vertigo drivers stack on U-Boot because U-Boot is also used in the PVM firmware and MicroDroid bootloader. Uh, two interesting uh, devices, Vertigo Block and uh, Vertigo Console for debug output. Or in the course of this work, we developed a set of, uh, well, a feature team developed a set of uh, uh, patches which enable fuzzing in U-Boot in sandbox mode. So basically, uh, U-Boot has a sandbox mode for uh, unit tests where it builds for x86 architecture. And uh, by leveraging the sandbox mode, we're able to fuzz the Virtaio interface uh, with ASAN enabled. Uh, and there was a, a number of security and stability issues identified addressed by these patches, uh, which are merged upstream. So uh, everything is fixed. And here is one of the example of the issues which were identified again uh, in this fuzzing effort. Uh, as, uh, as you remember, in the very beginning of the presentation, I showed you that there is next field in the descriptor table, which is fully attacker controlled. So or in this case, we can see that this value is read into the index in the variable i, which is not sanitized and passed to the virtq detach descriptor function, which in turn calls the bounce buffer stop where a state argument is computed based on the index i. So basically, if i is out of bounds, state is also out of bounds and fully attacker controlled. And this dangerous MCPI operation with the fully attacker controlled arguments makes code execution pretty straightforward. Um, and again, this is one of the examples of the issues uh, caught and identified with this fuzzing effort in U-Boot. And finally, this brings uh, us to the conclusion. So we're, um, in, in the course of this effort, we developed a number of others which are running in, uh, inside Google uh, on the continuous fuzzing infrastructure uh, internally. Uh, this is not that we develop fuzzers, run it for some time, and then uh, forget about it. No, the fuzzers are running 24-7. And as new code has been added to the repositories, it's been uh, checked in by the fuzzers, picked up, and they're being fuzz tested. 
Uh, those partners identified a number of security and stability issues which are addressed uh, proactively before release of their Android-protected KVM. And uh, as, their, uh, as, uh, as Google launches their uh, Android-protected KVM and virtualization framework, uh, this makes uh, their um, the certain improvements for um, Android platform makes uh, their um, uh, code more transparent, more updatable. Uh, everything is part of the ASP repository, and uh, this is a great opportunity to your leverage community support for fuzzing because uh, we really hope that your Android protected KVM will uh, inspire new cases. Uh, and uh, by contributing to fuzzing, we can harden the um, uh, harden this implementation altogether. Um, a few words on the future work. So, we're, well, we're never done with fuzzing. Uh, we have our, uh, plans for improving existing fuzzers, developing new fuzz targets, and we're actively working on upstreaming LKL to our Android common kernel. So, our, uh, LKL is not part of the upstream Linux mainline. There was a number of the upstreaming efforts. The last one uh, started in 2020, but there is still a considerable amount of work to do it to upstream LKL as part of the UML and uh, to our share the results of our fuzzing work and our uh, fuzzing tools with the open source community. We're currently working on the first uh, upstream into the Android common kernel. And uh, this is it. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I think uh, there are some time for Will and I to take any questions. How, how would you rank some of the improvements that, are, that you think are needed? You, in the last slide, you talked about improvements. Uh, which one? Need your support in improving fuzzing for virtual identity. Uh, so we're. Uh, oh yes. Uh, so basically, the, qu the question is, uh, uh, how would we, uh, how can we rank the uh, needed improvements for improving fuzzing for virtual virtualization? I I think. Um, I think we definitely need your more hands in writing uh, fuzzers covering other Vertio drivers uh, because currently we have uh, co good coverage for Vertio block, uh, Vertio, uh, Vertio ring, uh, Vertio PCI. Uh, there are some other uh, drivers which are, uh, would be great to cover is uh, 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 Vertio, uh, Vertio console and VSOC driver is definitely something that uh, is on our list to fuzz. And um, I think, um, I, I think also our different fuzzing tools, they bring different dimension to fuzzing because fuzzing is well, not deterministic process and uh, generally um, the fuzzers are trying to solve a very big, uh, uh, so basically they're doing search in a very big space and uh, different fuzzing engines provide different uh, uh, different strategies. So uh, basically, your C-scholar is uh, one way of fuzzing. LKL is another way of fuzzing. I think it would be interesting also to explore other um, other fuzz engines uh, with respect to your, how well they're doing uh, for Virtio uh, stack. So uh, I think that would be your probably number one from, from the top of my head. I have a question from the chat. Uh, I'll repeat. It says, uh, hello, may I ask, besides uh, Vertio, what about attack surface from host KVM like Shadow, vCPU, State Sync between host and guest? Could it bring sensitive data leakage? So, uh, this attack surface uh, is not covered with fuzzing, uh, but your, uh, this uh, attack surface uh, went through the manual code reviews uh, audits, or we did look at this attack vector. And indeed, yeah, this is absolutely legitimate attack pattern that we are uh, wanted to mitigate. Um, one of the requirements, uh, well, so uh, one of the reasons uh, why we are focusing on we're fuzzing on Vertio because we would like to have our fuzzers uh, running in their continuous uh, uh, infrastructure, and uh, there I there is uh, there are existing fuzzing engines uh, such as uh, KFX and KFL for fuzzing the. Uh, um, which, which might be interesting for fuzzing in this direction. Um, however, I think there might be a little bit uh, problematic to run continuously in our fuzzing infrastructure. So that's why we decided to uh, uh, prioritize fuzzers that we, we can schedule running 24 7 and uh, we, we covered it with the uh, manual code review. But this is an interesting topic. If, uh, it, 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 it's worth considering in, in, in the follow up work.
through to your mind, but a lot of the bit by our drivers were written to trust. Trust the back end, okay? And so if you have a retrospective that you tried to have Yes, so uh, Will is adding that uh, the hypervisor was written in with the security in mind while we're reusing a lot of Virtio uh, drivers in the uh, guest, which were written under assumption that the host is, uh, is, 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 is fully trusted, so our host has uh, full control over the memory. And uh, this is an interesting shift in the attack surface, which we really wanted to uh, prioritize. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, we haven't uh, received any pushback from the. Uh, so, so you're speaking about upstream and fixes for. Uh yeah, specifically for Bird IO, they tried to. Uh, I think it was not necessarily Bird IO code, but it was more common IO code. And there was pushback saying. It wasn't DMA. It wasn't DMA. Yeah, no one yelled. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much like the layer environment. Thank you very much.